Hi piggy people, it's me, Skinny Pigs one Who else would it be? So today's video, I wanna to talk to you about post-op care for guinea pigs. A little bit about why surgery is considered riskier for your guinea pigs. I'm gonna show you all my supplies and tell you why I think you need them too. So first off, surgery for guinea pigs, you're gonna hear is always, it's risky, it's risky, it's dangerous. So on one hand, yes, it is riskier. On the other hand, if you have a skilled vet, a healthy pig, and a great post-operative care plan, it's going to reduce the risks greatly. So the biggest risk for guinea pigs are is the anesthesia. They can't be trach tubed like a dog or cat getting surgery to keep their airways open in case there was trouble. If your guinea pig's not going to a skilled vet, is already compromised, so like their immune system's down, they're weak from something, the risks do go up. And if your guinea pig is ill and they're going for surgery, sometimes we can't help it, right? Sometimes that's the surgery they need. So you gotta kinda take the risks sometime. But where if your guinea pig is healthy, eating great, you have a great surgeon, the risks should be much lower. So there's still risks. There's risks with dogs and cats. There's risks with people. You just have to weigh the pros and cons. Do the pros outweigh the cons? So my recent surgery for Annalise, the cons were very few. The pros were great. So you just have to do that and everybody's going to be different for what they think is worth risking. So let's talk about, I just want to get a couple things out of the way right off the bat before I get into the supplies. I don't care what surgery your guinea pig is having, make sure you're taking pain medications home. A guinea pig in discomfort or pain at all is not going to want to eat and that's going to set your guinea pig back big time for getting them back to normal. So even if they just had a lump removed, I don't care, you need to get, Medicam would probably be the most common, Medicam or Meloxicam, they're both the same thing, just different words. So even if you just have a two or three day supply, please make sure your vet gives that to you. If they are not, ask for it. There should be no reason they can't give you a two to three days supply. So that is a huge thing. So many people are sent home without pain meds and I can't believe it. So especially for your more invasive surgeries, they really need one. And all vet clinics should be giving them an injection of pain after they're recovering to take them through to the night. They should be getting sub -Q fluids so that they're good for the night. Some vets, it's 50-50 whether they send you home with antibiotics. Um, my most recent, uh, they were actually given, an, they gave her an injection of antibiotics where normally my other vet gives me oral antibody, antibiotics. But whichever they do, some vets don't send them home with antibiotics. So that's debatable. But the pain meds, absolute must. If you do not have any, ask for some. Okay, so let's start into what supplies do I have and what supplies do I feel are absolutely crucial for your best post-operative care. So number one would be hand feeding items. So we're talking recovery food. Some people use critical care. I personally feel recovery food from Sherwood is your best bet. No, I'm not sponsored. People always ask me if I'm sponsored from Sherwood. No, I'm just happy with healthier ingredients. So if you compare the ingredients of Sherwood versus Oxbow's Critical Care, Sherwood, in my opinion, wins 10 times over. So get yourself something for recovery food and a syringe to hand feed. I do not care if your guinea pig is eating a bit on their own after surgery. What I do is feed them every two hours. So I mix up their recovery food. I feed them as much as they'll take comfortably. Now, if they're not eating at all, I make them take it. It's more force feeding versus hand feeding. But I give them what I can every two hours. Again, I don't care if your guinea pig's eating some on their own. They're not gonna be eating enough. And in the recovery food, I mix probiotics. so that their GI tract gut flora is getting back on track, especially if you're guinea pigs on antibiotics, that's really important. So next, a heat source is huge. When your guinea pig is coming back from surgery where they've been sedated or put under, 
With anesthesia, it's really hard for them to regulate their body temperature. So whether your guinea pig's hairless or furry, they need a heat source to keep them warm. So you can buy a heat pad, the ones that you plug in from Amazon. Use the pet safe ones. There's so many different options because the electrical cord is usually covered with hard wire, like not wire, metal so that they can't chew through it. Not that I find the guinea pigs want to anyway, but just for safety. So a heat pad is going to keep them warm and that's going to keep them really comfortable from whatever surgery they have had. So I find an abdominal surgery on guinea pigs, when they have the heat pad, they're actually able to lay down comfortably, where if they don't have a heat pad, they're standing like huddled up because it's probably very sore. So the heat gives them a really great comfort. So it's really important to have that for at least the first 12 to 24 hours. And another thing that I pick up is a heat pod. So a heat pod you can get from Amazon as well. I put this in their carrier to and from the vet because you're not going to have anywhere to plug in a heat pad while you're driving. So the microwavable heat pods are great to transport them to the vet and back from the vet. They just have to go in the microwave. Next is it's important to have a carrier for your guinea pig. So we all should have one. So when we're going to the vet or they're going to be looked after at the vet, you want a simple, easy carrier where they can reach in at the reach into them easily, visually see how they're doing. So as you saw, or you didn't see earlier, I made my own out of CNC grids, made a little two by one. Perfect for taking them to the vet and for the vet to look after them in their little carrier. Next, I have our Sherwood electrolytes. So this is something that you're going to mix into water to give to them. It stimulates their appetite. And it gets their electrolytes back on track. It has B vitamins to, again, give them energy, make them hungry. I think this is great. So I use this combo with Annalise of giving her that, the Sherwood Recovery Food, the probiotics, and it worked great. So I fed her every two hours for 24 hours. So you're up during the night and it's it, you have to be ready. So take some days off of work is another thing if you're doing surgery because you're going to need so it. The next thing that I personally feel that everybody should have, even if it's just for surgery, is fleece beds. So nothing works easier than having fleece to keep them comfortable and warm because on shavings, especially if they've had abdominal surgery, you don't want any shavings getting into the incision, irritating their belly. So fleece with a pad is perfect, absorbs the pee so it's keeping them cleaner and you could just change out the pads quick. Something I love to do, especially since Annalise had her spay, so that's on her tummy, is I didn't wanna have her in a snuggle sack and trying to pull her out every time I needed to feed her because I didn't want to hurt her incision or bother her in that way. So having a fleece pad in the snuggle sack was perfect. All I had to do was pull, slide the snuggle sack pad out and she came out right with it. So I didn't have to go in there and try and grab her out, potentially hurting her, irritating her incision line. I just slipped the pad out and out came the piggy on the pad. And then every time after I finished feeding her, I put a fresh pad in and she would hop right back into her snuggle bag when we were done. I would just open it up and guinea pigs want to hide. So she would hop in there and it was so easy to just lift that up and put it back in the cage. So same thing when I was taking her out of the cage, she would be in her snuggle sack. So I'd lift up the entire snuggle sack to take her out. So again, I'm not handling her, not putting pressure where her incision is, not you know getting any germs on her incision by handling her too much. So that is so much easier than trying to grab them with your bare hands after they have finished surgery. So these are all my supplies that I recommend everybody pick up. And hopefully that will help you feel a little more confident if your guinea pig's going to go into surgery or if someday down the line it needs a surgery. So if you have any questions, you can leave comments down below. 
Of course, if your guinea pig's going through surgery, speak with your vet about all your concerns, all the risks, what they recommend you do for post-operative care. These are just what I do, my opinion, my feelings. Okay? Bye-bye! If you like watching guinea pig videos, learning how to care for us, seeing product hauls or reviews, or really anything else guinea pig, please subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Down below I've left two more videos for you to pick from, so keep on watching!